Hello everybody, it's Karen here from tuppenscolour.co.uk. Thank you very, very much for joining me for today's project, which is this rather unusually shaped little origami box. Now, I used to do quite a bit of origami when my boys were small. Uh, they're all grown up now, of course. Um, but it was something that it was uh, easy to do. It didn't take up a lot of room, you didn't need a lot of equipment, and it didn't make a lot of mess. So when you've got small children around, it's a, you know, it's a very good pastime. Uh, and as they got older, I got interested in other things, and I didn't do so much of the origami, and uh, I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed doing it. So I was really pleased to come across this little project. And if you stay with me, I will show you how I made it. Here's what I'm going to be using today. I've got three squares of uh, envelope paper. This is tip top taupe and uh, I've cut them to five and three quarters of an inch on a side. This can be any size you like, as long as it's square and all three pieces are the same size. I have a, a scrap of tip top taupe card and I've got some more scraps of real red. I'm going to be stamping using uh, Sunshine Sayings and I'm going to use chocolate chip ink. Later on I'm going to need uh, my quarter inch circle punch, hole punch. I'm going to need that and I'm also going to be using some of the uh, the framelits dies. I'm using the layering circle and the uh, sweet and sassy hearts. Other things that I'm going to need are the real red uh, stitched ribbon and some uh, linen thread. I'm using envelope paper rather than DSP because it's lighter and it's easier to, to crease and to manipulate. But you could use DSP, absolutely you could. In fact, if I bring in the, the prototype of the box that I made, uh, that is made with a warm and cheer DSP. So as you can see, works just fine. But today I'm going to use envelope paper. Now, one of the things that I've discovered when I've been doing origami videos in the past is that the paper rustling makes an awful lot of noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and then I'm going to turn down the sound while I do it and then I'm going to turn the sound back up for the next step. All right, so you with me so far? Great. This is modular origami which means that you make uh, a number of simple shapes and then you link them all together to make a more complex shape. So to make our little box, I'm going to start with my piece of paper and I'm going to put my pretty side face down on the table and I'm going to fold that corner to that corner and crease. So now I have that shape and I'm going to fold that corner to that corner. And open it out again and now I'm going to take that corner and put it on that corner and that corner and put it on that corner. And that is the module. And I'm going to go and do the same to the other two pieces of paper. I'm going to refold each of the modules just a little bit so that I get that shape. 
and I'm going to work with these two to begin with. I'm going to need that one later, so I'm going to put it on one side. And now, each of these modules has a large flap, at what I like to think of is the top and then it's got two smaller flaps at the bottom. Now I'm going to take this piece on my right hand side, all right, and I've got it with the top with the large flap facing to the left. And I'm just gonna, just gonna open that slightly just to make my life a little bit easier. And I'm gonna put the two smaller flaps inside the larger one. I've got that sort of very interesting shape and I'm just going to flatten that and make sure that everything's fitting nicely so that I end up with that sort of shape. Before I complete the box with this piece I'm going to do a bit of uh, preparation work on it and I've got my uh, quarter inch hole punch here and on this piece which is at the the base where they all, jo all join and I'm on the side of the large flap I'm just going to punch some holes right the way through it just like that all right to lock my box together I've got my single piece uh, with the two smaller flaps at the bottom nearest to me and this piece has got the large flap at the bottom nearest to me and I'm just going to fit the flaps together. So smaller flap goes into larger flap. And then same thing happens on this side. Okay, and now it's almost finished. Now, if you're going to put a, a little treat or a little message in, I've got a little heart-shaped chocolate here put it in at this point. Now this is the only slightly fiddly bit because once again you have to go small flap into large flap. All right so you may have to have a little bit of help and partly unfold the box to make it happen. Okay but don't panic because it's all modular nothing stuck down and if it's not working out you can always unfold it and go back and do it again. This one in there's the other so you wind up with that sort of shape and now you just gently push and just gently twiddle your paper around until it takes up the shape that you want. I'm going to die cut out some real red hearts and I'm going to use, uh, I think it's this one from the Sweet and Sassy Hearts. Uh, now that this is the larger of the two straight sided heart shapes and it's, so that is the smallest of them all. That is the next to smallest. That is the third to smallest. So it's the fourth to smallest, if that makes any sense. But again, you know, you use one, whatever shape, whatever you've got that you like. So I'm going to take that over to the big shot and I'm going to do some cutting out. I cut out four of the red hearts and I want to put a crease down the middle of three of them. So I've got my stamp and trimmer and I'm lining the point of the heart up with the with the channel and folding the board down very carefully and making sure that I'm using the uh, the light grey blade which is the scoring blade. Just put a crease down the centre of the heart and I'm going to go and repeat that on three of the four and the fourth one I'm going to leave unscored. Ready to do some stamping so I've got my chocolate chip ink and I've got love and hugs on my clear blocks ready mounted up and I'm going to start with the word love and I'm going to put that about there, I think, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, and that's stamped nicely. And the and hugs is going to go underneath it. So this is where my head may get into the into the picture. I hope not, and I think that's about right. So count one, two, three, four, five, 
yeah I'm going to take this over to the big shop and cut it out in a minute with one of my circle framelits but I want to make sure that the circle that I use uh, is big enough so that I can get one of these uh, real red hearts on the other side of it and I think it's uh, this one yeah just about so that's the it's not the second to largest or the third to largest it's the fourth largest I think but you know just try it out and find one that suits you so I'm going to pop over to the big shot and I'm going to cut that out I'm going to start decorating now and I've got my three hearts that I put a crease in and I'm going to put a little bit of wet glue on either side of the heart and I'm going to make sure that I'm putting this on a on a crease not on a flap okay and that is the piece that has got the the holes that I punched on so I'm going to start on that one and I'm going to point the heart so if that's the top that's the bottom okay I'll point the heart that way and now I'm going to find my next crease which is here and again I'm going to point the heart towards bottom so can you see that one and that they're pointing in the same direction okay. you don't have to do that you know it's your your box you have as much fun with it as you like and the last one so here's my final crease and again a bit of a bit of the jolly old tombow and okay so how do I want this one going so this one's going to go top to top I think Now, as it stands at the moment, there's no really obvious way of getting into this box. Um, and if you really want to torment somebody, you can just leave it like that. And when they shake it, they'll know there's something inside, but they won't be able to work out how to get into it without actually destroying the box. Um, but if you want to be nice to them, you can give them a, a ribbon pull. So I've cut a length of a stitched satin ribbon in the real red. And these are the two holes. That I punched earlier on they're getting a little bit moth eaten now because I've been playing with this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to partly unfold the box okay so I'm going to take it back as far as I want that bit out of the way and I'm going to use my punch again and actually if I do one side at a time I just pull that flap out and then come in with the punch and punch all the way through now it is a bit fiddly okay and I want to make sure that my hole is going in the right place so I should disassemble that and find where I punch and punch again okay I'm going to pop that side back in lines up and now I'm going to pull out the other side and again you don't have to do this this is just a little extra step if you want to be really nice to people so holding it all together to make sure that nothing's slipping out of place and coming back in with my hole punch and punching it okay it's nothing like over complicating a job is there Karen there we go and fold all of that back together and now I've got two nice polite uh, holes in the top of the box there and I can take my real red ribbon and 
first thing I'm going to do is tie a knot. I'm actually going to make it a doubler because I don't want this going anywhere. And then a bow. Again, leave it at the knot stage if you like. It's entirely up to you. This is your project. Okay, I'm going to leave that as it is for a second because I now want to put the, uh, the sentiment on. So if I bring back my stamped and die cut piece of uh, uh, tip top taupe, I wanted I nearly said crumb cake, and then I nearly said mint macaron, which would have been really strange. So my handy dandy one quarter of an inch circle punch again, and I'm doing this first so that I know where the top is. And then the half that I die cut goes on to the back. And I'm using my liquid glue just because I have it handy. There we go. Piece of linen thread. Disentangle my charm from my scissors. And through and I can write from Karen on the bottom there and you would obviously write from whoever you are and let's attach this to the ribbon tag I've cut way too much linen thread there but hey ho so sue me Now I'm going to trim off the extra pieces. I'm going to keep leave a couple of pieces sticking out there and let's trim this bow to the way I want it. And that is it. So there it is, finished and with the with the sweetie inside now of course i put a sweetie but you could put something else um you know you could put some some jewelry um valentine day is coming up so if you were thinking of popping the question to somebody you know you could put an engagement ring in there just say it it's an idea but that is it for now and i do hope that you have enjoyed this project and if so don't forget to comment to like to share and to subscribe to my channel I would really like to see what you've been making and if you've been inspired by anything that I've done then please do visit my Facebook page and post a picture of it. The address is underneath this video and you can also get in touch with me through my blog and through my Stampin' Up! online store if you want to get your hands on any of the supplies that I have been using today. Uh, but that is it for now. I will be back very very soon and I hope that I will see you again. Bye bye.